Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today I have a product review for you. And the product which I will be reviewing is this. This is a pipe, a pipe by Mr. Brog. They call it the number 42 Cherry Sandblast. Now, Mr. Brog is a company located in Poland. They make all sorts of different pipe supplies, pipes, ashtrays for pipes, pipe tools, pretty much anything you can think of as an accessory or a tool for a smoking pipe, and they make pipes themselves. And they contacted me, they said they wanted to send me a pipe and several other pipe tools, accessories, what have you, to see if I could review them on the channel. I said yes, this is the first item I will be reviewing, the number 42 Cherry Sandblast Pipe by Mr. Brog. Now this is made of cherry wood, as the name would suggest. Most wooden pipes are made of briar wood. It is the root bowl of the heath tree in the Mediterranean. And the cherry wood is a little bit different in terms of smoking characteristics from a briar wood pipe, but we'll get into that. This is a bargain price pipe. On the Amazon.com storefront for Mr. Brog, this pipe, as of the recording of this video, is priced at $27.99 which is a very reasonable price for a smoking pipe. A standard Peterson pipe, um, a Savinelli pipe, some of the lower grades or mid-grade pipes are going to be usually at least around $100. That's for briarwood though, and this is cherry wood. So we're approaching this review from the standpoint of this is a bargain pipe. We're not going to expect the same things we're going to expect out of a $300 Costello pipe. Um, or out of a Dunhill, or even out of a $150 Peterson pipe. This is priced at $27.99, so a very reasonable price. It's less than you'll pay for a lot of, quote, basket pipes at your local tobacco store. So we're going to take a closer look at this pipe. We're going to look at some of the features, see how it's constructed. Then I'm going to load it up with tobacco, give it a smoke, tell you about its smoking char characteristics, tell you how it's been as it's been breaking in, if there's any sort of flavor imparted by the cherry wood, pretty much anything I can think of about this pipe we will delve into. So stay tuned. Next, we'll take a closer look. So here's the box my Mr. Brog pipe came in. You can see on the side here, 42 Ebony Sandblast Cherry. Um, very minimalist packaging. Obviously, this is not a very expensive pipe, so you're not going to get any fancy pipe sleeve, pipe sock, pipe box, anything like that. Basically, just the pipe. Um, it was wrapped in plastic inside the box, and it came with a filter installed. This is a diamond filter um, branded for Mr. Brog, but um, they make these for all sorts of different companies. I don't like filters, I don't use filters, I hate filters, so I take the filter out. But you can see, if we just pop this stem off, this is where the filter would go in this pipe. Um, I don't like how filters restrict the draw, I don't like how they rob the flavor of the tobacco. I don't find them necessary at all because I'm not inhaling the pipe tobacco, so I, I really just don't see the use of them. A lot of people love them though, so if that's your thing, go for it. But let's take a closer look at this pipe. Get the stem back on. It is a moderately small pipe. Um, big giant hands, fairly small pipe. I mean, the bowl itself is meh, reasonably sized and the actual chamber, I would say, is just slightly narrower than average and probably about similar, or uh, average depth, slightly narrower than average. It has a saddle bit here with a slight bend. I would call this sort of a bent apple shape. Um, fairly chunky shank, and there's some contrasting wood here. They call this an ebony sandblast. I would not call that a sandblast finish. Maybe there's been a little bit of sandblasting done to it, but I would call that a manufactured sort of carved design there. But if they want to call it sandblasted, fine. They can call it sandblasted. The stem is not made of vulcanite, um, and I wouldn't, it's not the same sort of acrylic that, say, a Costello pipe uses. Costello doesn't use vulcanites for their stems, usually they use an acrylic, but it seems like a thicker, sort of more durable acrylic. This seems just kind of like plastic, um, which is fine. It is plastic. And I put a pipe bit on it because I like to bite down on my bits or on my stems, and this is just really uncomfortable unless you have the pipe bit. So if you're someone who likes to clench your pipes and you're used to vulcanite stems, you might want to keep in mind that this is not particularly comfortable to clench unless you put a pipe bit on there. But any other acrylic stem is going to be that way as well. And then we have our cherry wood stummel bowl chamber. Everything that's wood is made of cherry wood. Now, the differences between cherry wood and briar wood, 
are not hugely significant in terms of what you're actually going to notice when you're smoking. Briarwood is a bit better at sucking up moisture and flavor from the tobacco. And so mostly what you would notice is a difference after the pipes have matured. So after quite a long time of smoking, say a briarwood pipe and a cherrywood pipe, you might notice a bit difference in terms of smoking characteristics. Maybe a slightly less chance, maybe slightly less of a chance for the pipe to get wet, for it to get hot perhaps. It varies depending on the pipes. And one other thing I've heard about cherrywood pipes, and I've never actually had a cherrywood pipe, so this is all based upon what I have read, is that they are a little bit more prone to being damaged if you get it hotter than it should be. So if you really let this pipe heat up, it could split a little more easily than perhaps an equivalent briarwood pipe. So you might want to keep that in mind. In terms of break-in period, all the different things that you would do with a briarwood pipe, you'd basically do with this cherrywood pipe. Just be a little more careful about letting it get too hot. When I was breaking this in, the first few bowls I had, I did notice a little bit of a flavor, actually. Um, kind of hard to describe because I've never sucked on a block of cherry wood before, but I guess that's what I was tasting. But that goes away pretty quickly, and you're just left with a fairly standard smoking experience. Now, I'm not sure how well the camera is going to pick this up, but this particular example of a Mr. Brog pipe was actually drilled in a fairly competent way. The draught hole is pretty much right in the middle of the bowl. It's at the proper depth, not too high above the heel of the bowl, not too low into the heel of the bowl, and it's centered quite well. So I was pretty pleased with how this was drilled out. If we look into the shank, you can see the space left for the filter system there, and then the draught hole. The draught hole is maybe a slightly narrower than I would like. I usually like the 532nd, so if I weren't reviewing this pipe, you know, completely stock. I may have drilled that out to 5.30 seconds just for my own preference. And the one thing that I'm not a huge fan of in any pipe that is made to hold a filter, obviously they have to enlarge the, the shank here. And so when you're trying to pass a pipe cleaner, you kind of have to aim. Of course you can't see, so you have to sort of hope that you're going to hit the actual draught hole when you're trying to pass that cleaner. So it makes it sometimes a little, bit, a little bit more difficult to pass a pipe cleaner than it would norm normally be if it were not made to hold a filter. And obviously that's not a, the fault of the pipe itself, it's just the way it's designed. Just the fact that I don't happen to like using filters kind of makes that an issue for me. But you can see as I try to pass a pipe cleaner, if you sort of jack it around a little bit, you can get it in there eventually. So a pipe cleaner will pass into the bowl, but you might just have to adjust a little bit. And if we take one more close look at the pipe here, you can see that it's really decently finished. There's the Mr. Brog number 42 cherry on the back of the shank there. Um, this is a very deep, dark stain, an ebony stain, so you can't really tell what the grain would have been in this particular piece of cherry wood, if it's been filled or if there's any pitting or anything that's been filled in. And that's fine, you know, this is a bargain price pipe. It's $27.99. You're not buying this for an exceptional graining pattern or anything like that. But now I guess we should see how this pipe smokes. That is the most important thing about a smoking pipe after all. So let's take a look at that right now. All right then, here's our Mr. Brog, number 42, cherry wood, ebony sandblast. I'm going to light this baby up. It is loaded with a little bit of my very favorite Dunhill Elizabethan mixture. I figure I should use a tobacco that I am very, very familiar with when I'm smoking this pipe. And obviously I've smoked this before. I've already broken it in fairly well. I've done six or seven bowls, I believe, out of it now. So it's broken in enough to be able to base a review on this. Um, but I've been smoking pretty much Elizabeth Elizabethan, other mixtures that I'm very, very familiar with just so I can sort of not have to think about the tobacco and think more about what I'm tasting in the pipe. So let's light it up. I'm also using the Mr. Brog pipe lighter that I was sent, which I will be reviewing at a later date. And the Mr. Brog pipe tool, which I will also be reviewing. Making a mess here. So like I said, this pipe came with a filter included. It is meant to be smoked with a filter, but you know, I have several pipes that are meant to be smoked with a filter. 
I don't smoke them with filters. They smoke fine. This is no exception. The draught is definitely a bit wider, um, less restricted when you, not, when you don't use a filter. It's still maybe a little bit more restricted than I would like. So as I mentioned when I was showing you the close-up, I might take a drill bit, a 5.30 second drill bit, and just open up that draught hole a little bit. But by no means is the size of the draught hole a detriment to the smoke. It's just my personal preference. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. How does this Mr. Brog number 42 cherry wood ebony sandblast pipe smoke? It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. You know what, when you're talking about smoking pipes, fine tobacco pipes in particular, once you've gotten past whether or not it is drilled correctly, if the draught hole is centered, if everything lines up properly, once you get past the smoking mechanics, what you're really talking about in terms of added cost, of added quality, is the quality of the materials, the handcrafting aspects, places like Costello, um, and then some of the artisanal pipe smokers who are really putting in hundreds of hours into each pipe, well maybe not each pipe, but putting in a lot of man hours into handcrafting something. The, the beauty of the materials, whether or not the finish shows off the grain, all sorts of different things go into the cost of an expensive pipe. For a sort of bargain price pipe like this, it's cherry wood, it's not briar wood. It's a dark stain, you're not gonna see a really beautiful grain popping through here. It uses a kind of cheaper plastic for the bit. But as long as the drilling is on and the mechanics are good, you're gonna have an okay smoke. Now, with a really beautiful Algerian briar pipe that's been aged for 40 years, you might notice a transcendent smoking experience. But with a pipe like this, you will have a perfectly enjoyable, decent smoke for a really decent price. $27.99 is nothing to sneeze at. So if you're someone who's looking to get into the pipe smoking hobby, you know, I mentioned before in some of my other videos how um, I don't recommend getting a really cheap pipe if you're just starting out. And I've sort of changed that idea in the past few months maybe because a lot of people have asked me about this, you know, what pipe should I buy for my first pipe? And I think that as long as, as I mentioned, the mechanics of the pipe are decent, then you can use that pipe as your first pipe and get a fairly realistic idea of whether or not you're gonna enjoy the hobby. Now, I cannot say that every Mr. Brog pipe is going to have perfect drilling, It's gonna have a nice centered draught hole, It's going to have the bowl at the proper depth and the draught hole going into the heel of the bowl at the proper depth, I can't say that. I don't know for sure. And the fact that they are so cheap and they're probably pretty automa automated in their production, I can't say for sure that that's going to be the case. So with reservation, I could recommend this as a first pipe to someone who's trying to get into pipe smoking, but I cannot say for sure that every Mr. Brog pipe you get is going to have perfect smoking mechanics. Um, I could recommend this to people who are already into the pipe, pipe smoking hobby and just want maybe a cheaper pipe that they can knock around a little more, that they can experiment more if you're the kind of person who doesn't like to mix different genres of tobacco in different pipes and you want to try out some different blends, but all your pipes are already dedicated to certain blends. I don't dedicate pipes, but a lot of people do. A lot of people swear by that. You might want to pick up a couple Mr. Brog pipes. You can use them to experiment with different tobacco blends. I can't think of anything wrong with this pipe as it stands here and for the price it is. It is not an $800 Dunhill. It just isn't. And is a Dunhill even an $800 Dunhill, if you get what I mean by that? I don't know. You definitely will get what you pay for to a certain extent with tobacco pipes, but you can also get a perfectly serviceable, perfectly enjoyable little smoking pipe from Mr. Brog on Amazon.com. I will link to their storefront on Amazon. I will link to this specific pipe and you can check out the Mr. Brog number 42 Cherry Wood Ebony Sandblast. A decent little pipe for the money. So thank you so much for watching. I've been your good friend Bradley. You have been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things reviewing the number 42 Cherry Wood Ebony Sandblast pipe by Mr. Brog. I'll see you later.